Okay, welcome back. Today we are going to be going over map scripts a little bit more in depth. We've talked about them in the past. We've used them a couple times to do some things that the regular scripts weren't enough for us to do. Um, but today we are going to be talking about them a little bit more. So the map scripts, um, you know, as you know, there are a couple different types of map scripts and these are defined as constants and they're defined in the map scripts.h file and include constants map scripts.h and here we have a little bit of an explanation about what each of the map scripts are and we're going to go through this and then we're going to look at a couple examples of them. So these are the, the scripts themselves and um, they are kind of ordered with numbers. You see they're out of order, but the, the order is in the, the, you know, the order that they're generally called um, by the game when you're loading into a map um, or, you know, reloading into a map or, you know, something of that effect. So this first one here on load, it runs after the layout is loaded um, but not drawn yet. And as it says here, it's used to set meta tile. So what that means is we have drawn the layout. The, the game has figured out where all of the tiles themselves are going to go, but sometimes your meta tiles, you know, you like the ice inside of the eighth gym, it has different states and you might want to set the state of it to be, you know, something different than its default or something like that. Um, on load is going to be the map script that you are going to use and it's map script on load. All of these have map script before them. This is just shortened. Um, so on load, pretty useful for things like setting meta tiles. On frame table, now this is different than, than on load or on transition or on resume, but it's the same as on warp into map table in the fact that it actually takes multiple different scripts um, and the scripts are set using a variable um, and that variable can be changed to determine which map script you're going to run inside of the table. And it only, it only executes the first script whose condition is satisfied. So in this example, we only have one here and it takes a variable and it has a value for the variable and then it has a script, but we could add more of these if we wanted and we could, uh, you know, change this only runs when it's equal to one or two or three, you know, and that could be our table, our map script table. And this specific one um, on frame table, it runs every single frame after the map has faded in before the player input is processed, every single frame. Um, so that allows us to do a lot of things like, uh, you know, be aware of updates automatically. If for some reason there's something that we go on and we want the control, uh, something we're doing in one part of the script and we don't want to pass the control directly using a go to or a call or something like that. We just want it to automatically know when it's happened. Let's say there's multiple, like 10 different ways of making it happen. You don't always want to, uh, you, you don't want to have to deal with all of that. So sometimes you can just, you know, have it happen on frame update, depending on whether or not a variable is set, things like that. Next on transition. This is pretty basic. It's run during the transition to the map. It's used usually to set flags, bars, position movement types, weather, etc. Um, so if you want to, you know, make sure that certain NPCs are present at a given time, um, like during your plot sequence, um, this is where you would go to set their flags um, before the transition to the map starts. Um, Next, on warp into map table. Um, this is another table. Like I said, this is run after the objects are loaded in. Um, and again, it's only run, the, the only the first script is run and it is used to add objects um, as someone is warping into the map, which is different, uh, is handled differently um, than the regular warping or the regular loading in. So next is on resume. This one will load anytime you back out of your bag as well as um, loading when you return to the field. So when you when you end a battle, it'll load. When you um, back out of your bag, it'll load. And this is useful. We've, we could have used this in our um, Wild Encounters video. We set up a Kyogre um, like outside of the Little Root map. Um, we set up a Kyogre here. And if we catch the Kyogre, it actually stays there for a second. 
um, and we could use this instead to hide and remove it. Um, and that would allow us to, after the battle's over, immediately make it disappear. Um, because as it is, we have to, like, it kind of, like, fades away um, present while we are, like, looking at it. And if you've already caught it in your Pokeball, it shouldn't be there, right? Like, if you've already caught it, it should disappear automatically. And you can use on Resume to do that. Um, on Dive Warp is not something you're probably going to use if ever, but maybe. Um, it's run after you choose whether to dive or emerge. And, uh, you know, the game only uses it once, as you see here, but it's, you know, pretty uncommon. It's just specific to diving warps. Um, so if you are using a diving warp and for some reason you want some custom script that changes, you know, your location of warping or something like that, um, you can use um, this map script. Then the last one is on return to field. Now this um, is run after on resume when you back out into the field, um, but this does not run when you enter the map. Whereas on resume should run when you enter the map, this one should only run when you're returning to the field, like after a battle. So these are the map scripts that we have available to us. Um, so the most common ones you probably use are on load, on transition, on frame table, on resume. Uh, those are probably the four you might use on warp into map table as well. Um, but those are the ones you want to be aware of the most. We are going to look at three. Um, just briefly, we are going to talk about the map script on transition, which is just simple. Um, map script on frame table, um, which again, we can define as a table and it's defined so the the regular ones that aren't tables, it's just a colon with the script afterwards. The one that the ones that are tables, you use a bracket enclosing inside of the scripts, and then you need to set up a table where you have the variable, they can be different variables, but the variables that are holding the values to trigger the strict script execution, kind of like your trigger scripts have a, a value that triggers them, and then the name of the script after a colon, and then they're on their own lines. So here when var temp2 is equal to zero, we are going to run this every frame uh, script, only when it's equal to zero. Then when we are going to also, we're also going to do the resume, and on, on resume we're going to run this on resume, and on transition we're going to run on transition. Now on transition comes in when we load into the map, so we're going to use that, of, you know, a common thing to do, you know, setting vars and flags. We are going to set this var temp2 to be equal to zero so that this on frame table triggers. So when we transition, this should immediately trigger one time, no matter what, when we walk into the map. Every single time we walk into the map, because this happens before the on frame table, this will set it and then this will run it. Now on resume, on resume is we're going to, so this is gonna, we're gonna use it to show how it works, like backing out of a menu, how it's gonna repeat, do over and over again. So we're gonna use it to hide. Um, I'm just using this little testing grounds that I've created here that we're going to use in a later video where I'll actually talk more about it. Um, but this object here, I'm going to hide and show him depending on uh, just repeatedly, just over and over again, back and forth. Um, so we gave him a flag. Uh, well, we didn't give him the flag, but we created a flag, flag testing grounds just for our testing grounds. If the flag is set, we clear it and then we hide the object, hide object at, and this is his ID, his ID is one, and then this is the uh, define for the map. Else set flag show object. So either we hide it and clear the flag or we set the flag and show it. And it's just gonna go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So it should hide them and show them and hide them and show them and hide them and show them. Now every frame, the thing that we call when this is zero, so it gets called once, uh, when it starts and then any other time that this gets turned to zero, we are going to um, add a variable to this other temp variable, temp zero, um, which we're just going to use to keep track of the fact that it's, you know, it makes changes to our overworld. Nothing like, we're not doing anything useful per se. Then we're going to do a message box that just says updated on frame, wait message, and then set var, var temp to one. So this means that it's not gonna run again after after every frame runs, it's not gonna go again because um, it changes the variable that it runs. It's now one instead of zero. 
uh, and then it releases, so it's just going to stop there. Um, and then this MPC3 script that we have here, um, it's just given to this MPC that I have right here, um, and all it does is when we talk to them, it buffers the temp variable that we're adding to um, into this string, and it displays the number so we can actually see like what number we're getting, and then it sets the var equal to zero. So that means as soon as this script is over, it should rerun the on resume, uh, or it should rerun the every frame because now it's zero again. And every frame afterward, it should rerun it. But again, of course, it's gonna update again, so it's not gonna rerun every single time, but it should rerun once because we updated this and it should run immediately afterward because again, it's running every frame. So that's how we use it to update things separately because this is not, there's no relation to this every frame thing here. We're not calling it here, we're just changing a variable that is setting it to run at, at, you know, at every frame interval. We don't have to actually affect the script itself, we don't have to call it, we don't have to go to. That's all we have to do. So here we are, uh, we've already compiled it, so we don't have to do anything. We open up immediately, updated on frame, that's this every frame thing. It's going to add one to this temp var, it's going to wait message, it's going to set var, and it's not going to run this again. See, we can move now, it's not continually running because um, it changed the value of var temp two. If we go up and we talk to this guy here, it's one, we know it should be one because we just added one to it and the temp variable start at zero. And then immediately after we're done, update it on frame, it ran every frame again. Now it's back, we can do whatever we want, it's two and immediately after updated on frame because we ran every frame again because every time we talk to this guy it's going to set it back to zero so every time we talk to him it's going to update again now if we go into our bag and then we exit out this guy's gone why because on resume we clear the flag and hide the object if the flag is set and the flag starts off set in this case so we are going to see him disappear and if we do it again, he reappears. We do it again, he disappears. And you can use that to get rid of the Kyogre or you know whatever legendary encounter that you start with um, so that they don't appear after you back into the, you know, after your return to the overworld script. Now, important thing to note is I only hid the object, so he's still technically here. You have to remove the object if you want to completely remove it. Um, this object is just in the way right now, um, but obviously that can be done. You can even, if you don't want to completely remove it, you can just move them into the wall and then move them back when you need to, but that's not necessary at all. I, but anyway, um, so these are some of the basic map scripts, um, like the, some of the concepts that you should, you know, kind of wrap your head around. You should read some of the, the game's map scripts. They obviously won't be as clean because they won't be in Pori script, but to get an idea of what they can do and what you should be using them for um, inside of your ROM hack, uh, you're going to probably want to get familiar with them, especially if your ROM hack is plot heavy and you're completely making, you know, ground up new region, new plot, new professors, new NPCs, characters, everything. You're going to need these map scripts to keep track of everything, to keep track of the positions of all of your plot points, to keep track of, you know, the variables that uh, run the state of each town. Um, so you're going to want to get very familiar with them. Um, again, this map scripts file here, if you want to read through it, is in include constants map scripts .h. Other than that, I think we are going to end the video. Um, if you have any questions about map scripts, make sure to leave a comment here in the Discord. Otherwise, we will see you on the next one.